Hey, I'm Alina, and I'm the owner of this beautiful Dodge 1979 B200. We've got a couch that pulls out into a bed, just like that, and a little table here. The table sits on a stand and I can set it up like so, so I can do my studying over here. I've got this space heater going, which I'm plugged into a house right now, so I can keep myself warm in the winter. And I've got a sink here that turns on. This is how I wash my dishes. I've got a propane stove here, so the side of my van has a pro propane tank. And I can turn any of these elements on and cook when I need to. And I've also got an oven. And this is my fridge, so when I'm not plugged into a house, I usually keep all of my food in here and do all of my cooking in here. Um, and I usually live in my van full time in the summer, and in the winter I find a place to plug into and usually use the kitchen and the shower. I keep all my clothes in the closet here. stuff up there and under the bed so right now I'm plugged in so I've got these these little lights that I can run and uh, the lights up here usually run off of the battery um, I don't have an accessory battery in this van but I'm planning on putting one in this summer so that I can run the lights when the car battery isn't running and I also have a little solar light here that charges in the sunlight and then you can turn it on at night when you want to read so what got you into thinking about living in a van in the first place? Uh, well, I drove a van down from Calgary to Mexico a couple of years ago. Uh, and I just really loved living in a van. I love that you always have everything you need everywhere you go, but you never have too much. Um, and then when I signed up to go to school this year, I was looking at living in a very expensive city and um, I find van life a really creative way to kind of make it doable to go to school and, and not work full time and, and be able to still afford nice healthy food and um, yeah. How did you find, because you've been living in a van for a year and a half now, mm -hmm. how did you find the initial move in? having to like minimize your possessions to kind of live within something this small? Yeah, it was definitely, I definitely had to do some downsizing. I definitely have a few boxes in my mom's basement still. <laughs> um, but I've, I've been a traveler for a good part of my life. So I'm kind of used to living out of backpacks and um, really boiling it down to what's essential. And if you get a van this size, you can still afford to have, you know, a, l a little bit more than the bare minimum um, but yeah it just it makes you consider what's really important in your life and what you can't live without what are some challenges that you face while living in a van finding places to go to the bathroom is sometimes a challenge uh, you usually have to position yourself if you're going to live full-time in a van you got to position yourself so that you're close to public washrooms um, or have your washroom on board which i don't right now um, and uh, the way that I work around the challenges of finding places to shower is I usually get a membership to a local gym and it's a good excuse to move the body around a little bit and then have a shower afterwards. Yeah. And then on the flip side, what are the, what are the major benefits that you've found living in a van? Uh, it's definitely economical and yeah, I see it as kind of a, kind of a social justice movement and I've you know it's really hard for young people right now to find affordable ways to make ends meet and I've found that living in a van and finding places to plug in in the winter uh, not only helps me do that but also helps my roommates out and you know makes their rent a little bit lower and yeah I, I see it as a really important part of the community living kind of movement and yeah just a creative way for for people to to make ends meet uh, yeah 
Can you tell me a little bit about what your living situation in the van is like in the winter? Because I think a lot of people don't know how to overcome maybe like the cold mm -hmm. while living in a van. What is your solutions to that? Right. So my solution in this van has been to find a, a place that will let me plug in to. So my van has a cord that I plug into an outlet that's plugged into the, the power source for the house. Um, so I'm able to run a space heater in here for a couple hours when I go to bed. And it does take some getting used to waking up in a cold van and getting out of bed and putting on cold clothes. But um, yeah, I find the, the benefits kind of outweigh the challenges. There also are some creative ways that I've tried um, using like little ceramic planter pots, kind of like this here, uh, where you would take that and put a candle underneath and then the candle kind of warms up the ceramic pot and it actually works pretty well. Um, yeah, other people have propane furnaces and yeah, but it does, it takes some getting used to. Would you recommend van life and what type of person would you recommend it to? I, I would definitely recommend van life. I would recommend it for people that enjoy pushing themselves out of their comfort zones a little bit. Um, and maybe people that don't have a ton of stuff or are actively looking to downsize and people that need freedom too. Um, one of the, one of the biggest challenges being in Victoria for over a year for me is, is having to be in one place. And before this, I was very nomadic and, and I find living in a van always gives you the option to go anywhere, anywhere you want to go, um, and still have your home on your back all the time. So what's the future of van life for you? Uh, well, I am going to graduate the herbal medicine program uh, at my school in a couple of years, and I want to put a garden on top of my van. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm going to start doing that this summer, and yeah, I, I'll definitely be living in a van until I'm done school, for sure. After that, I, I don't know. Yeah. What would you say to somebody that already maybe researching this type of lifestyle or thinking about doing it themselves? Be careful with how glorified it's become. Hashtag van life is not, it's not everything that it looks like on the internet. And um, yeah, there are real challenges, but if you're up for it, I'd say go for it. And it's a great adventure. If you had to sum up, what would your personal philosophy on life be? <laughs> That's not a fair question to not prepare me for. <laughs> we're all we're all part of something bigger and that that everything we do contributes to the way that the world turns out regardless of its if it's good or bad and yeah. To remember that your actions matter. My name is Samantha and this is my van. She's a 2005 Mercedes Sprinter. The beauty of a Sprinter is that it's kind of like Lego. You can do what you want with it. Come on in. The great thing about this toolbox is that it has locks on it. Freedom and like the, the hope of not paying rent in like a few years. This is what I feel like I can do um, right now. It's a, it's a movement and living in small spaces makes you realize what you really need. What's up guys, it's Forrest. Thank you so much for watching that video. Please hit like and subscribe to this channel if you're not already. Right below me right now is a playlist of a whole bunch of videos I've done on alternative dwellings, vans, sailboats, tiny homes, all sorts of good stuff. So go ahead and click that link and continue watching. Thanks so much and I'll see you next week. I upload every single Monday at 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.